In this video, we will see how we can use eigenvalues and eigenvectors to analyze a second order ordinary differential equation. Suppose we have a second order differential equation uh, of this form. A, B, and C are constants. How could we describe solutions to this equation without actually solving it? So one way is to use uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors of what? Of uh, a matrix. We want to be able to express that second order differential equation as a system of differential equations giving us a matrix. We can determine the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that matrix and use them to uh, characterize the solutions of the, uh, the, the second order differential equation. So let's take a specific example. Let's take this second order ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients. K is some constant, could be any real number, uh, and we will do a couple things. First, transform that second order differential equation into an, a system of first order equations. Determine the eigenvalues of A. Sketch the phase portrait for, well, we will take a specific value of K. We could use other values as well, but um, let's just look at, for this video, K is equal to zero. So the first thing we want to do is express the differential equation as a system. So, to do that, one trick is to set x1 is equal to y, x2 is y prime. Why do we do that? Because then x1 prime is y prime and y prime is just x2. What is x2 prime? x2 prime is y double prime, and we know what y double prime is. y double prime, given uh, using the given second order differential equation, is negative 2kx2 minus x1. Substituting these values into um, d vector x dt gives us a system of first order differential equations. Then we can use the um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that 2 by 2 matrix A to analyze the second order differential equation. What are the eigenvalues of matrix A? Well, they are the roots of the characteristic polynomial. The char characteristic polynomial is lambda squared plus 2k lambda plus 1, which means the roots are uh, negative k plus or minus square root k minus 1. Okay, so what does that mean? Depending on what the values of k are, we could get um, different behaviors in the, um, the solutions of our system. We could get different eigenvalues. And we could classify our, our system and describe the solution set using just the eigenvalues of our matrix. So let's just consider k is equal to 0, uh, in which case, uh, when k is equal to 0, our eigenvalues are just um, positive negative square root of negative 1, which you might uh, have, have seen before. That's the uh, imaginary number often called i. Um, when we see a system where the eigenvalues are pure imaginary, the solution curves are circular in the phase plane um, to determine whether or not the trajectories move clockwise or counterclockwise. We plot a few direction vectors uh, to determine uh, the answer to that question. So at 1, 0, we have a vector pointing straight down. At 0, 1, we have a, a vector pointing right. So this suggests that the trajectories move clockwise. So uh, don't forget, draw a couple. Um, it, it is helpful to draw, you know, if the arrows indicating uh, the direction of motion for each of the solution curves. Testing a few points does help as well. If um, you're encountering a similar type of problem uh, on a homework assignment project, something you may want to check your answer with Wolfram Alpha um, using the stream plot command. When k is equal to zero, we have two equations, dx dt, dy dt, um, 
dx dt is y, dy dt is negative x. And then using the stream plot command, the syntax is something like this. Let's go over to Wilfram Alpha for just a second to see whether or not we got something that looks uh, correct. So I've entered the stream plot. Um, I've entered the command that we want to use. Um, let's see. It's thinking, it's thinking. Ah, there's the face portrait, um, the stream plot for that uh, system of differential equations, and it does look like the sketch that we had in the slides. So that's good. Um, we chose a particular value of k for this analysis. We could have chosen uh, other values of k and gotten different results, of course. If k uh, were something that was greater than one, you could see that the lambdas would, been, would have been real, distinct, and negative, meaning the critical point at the origin would have been stable. If k is equal to one, um, we would have had a repeated eigenvalue. Lambdas, lambda one and two would have been exactly equal to uh, negative one. Uh, stable because um, the lambdas are negative and so on for other values of k. We could consider um, these other cases as well. But um, to summarize, we looked at the, the following concepts in this video. We, took, we saw how we could take a second order differential equation with constant coefficients and express it as a system of the form dx dt is ax, where x is a vector. 